Welcome to Lesson 13 in the Roger Hudson Guitar Method. We're in the key of A major. This is page 65. In the key of A major, we have three sharps in the key signature, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So in first position, we will have a G sharp on the third fret. That will be the leading tone to A. You have a C sharp here. You also have another G sharp, first fret, third string. C sharp, second fret, second string. And then you have a G sharp on the fourth fret. That will be the leading tone to play the A, the high A. So in this scale, we'll, we will be shifting uh, to second position as you approach the A on the first string. Okay, here's the A major scale, first position. Here's an A major scale study in the middle of page 65. In this one, keep in mind that you will be needing to shift positions. Pay close attention to the finger numbers. At the bottom of page 65, we have a short study in A major, A major chord study. In this one, pay close attention to where the bar chords are. There's a B minor bar, five uh, strings at the second fret. There's also a bar chord, a D, where the, where the fourth finger is on the fifth fret, fifth string. It's actually a very common shape for a, for a major chord. Uh, with no open strings. So um, here make sure you're barring at the second fret, fourth finger. We'll play the D here. Make sure you keep your elbow down, your arm down in order to make that bar. You also have a, a half bar for the F sharp minor. And then notice at the end we will have this uh, E7 sus4. A sus means suspended. Uh, that means that the A is suspending the G sharp, which will actually make the chord a, 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 an E7 chord. That's the sus or the suspension. And then you have a bar here at the end. On page 66, we have a short prelude by Matteo Carcassi. Uh, this one is in 6-8 time. Make sure that you pay attention to, in the second line, there's a half bar where you're going from an A chord, then you have this A7, and then you're going to stay on that bar, and then you'll drop out of the bar, play this diminished chord, all right. This is important that you uh, don't pick up fingers that don't need to be picked up from one chord to the next. You'll be holding a chord shape. Uh, virtually every measure will be a different chord shape. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. Page 66, we have an old American folk song called Frankie. Sometimes it's called Frankie and Johnny. Uh, the sung version of this has got a whole bunch of verses, so if you want to look up the song uh, to hear what the song's about, it's a story. Um, 
This is a good little solo for you to memorize. Uh, there's a swing to this one. You want to have a nice little swing to it. So the eighth notes, uh, when you have pair, a pair of eighth notes, the, the uh, first eighth note will be a little longer than the second one. One and two and three and four and it's, that's the feel. Uh, keep in mind a few things. Uh, at the very beginning here, you're going to need to make a quick shift to a bar when you... Uh, right there, you're going to need to go to the bar. Pay close attention to the slurs whenever they occur. There are some shifts. These are in thirds, the intervals of a third. Very popular and common uh, interval to play on the guitar. Also, it's something interesting, the third line down, you'll, you'll notice the first measure there. Um, there is an X in front of one of the notes. That's actually a double sharp. So not only is that an F sharp, but it's an F double sharp, which is the same as a G. So you may be wondering, well, why? Why put uh, F double sharp there? Why don't we just put a, a G there? Well, first of all, there's a G sharp in the key signature. So if you put that, make that a G, then you'll need to, you would need to put a natural sign in front of the G. And then when you play the last chord of that measure, that would be a G sharp, so you'd have to put another sharp in. So it's kind of a waste of uh, ink, and it's, and it's actually a little more clear. You see how this melody goes up right there. Um, so make sure that uh, you don't uh, freak out when you see that double sharp. Also, pay close attention to finger numbers and look at the uh, look at the third measure of the. Uh, third line. You're going to play this little little lick here, little pull off. Make sure you have, I would have all three of these fingers down, four, three. All right. Then at the last, the last line, the first measure there, this is a C sharp, and then this is a C natural. All right. Here's how it goes. One, two, three, four. Finishing up lesson 13 on page 67 is a little uh, Brazilian bossa nova piece that I wrote called Um Poco de Bossa, a little bit of bossa. In this one, uh, you have to make sure you keep the bossa nova alternating bass. It's in 2-4 time. The bass will be doing this almost the entire time. But the rhythms in the melody and in the chords are very complex and syncopated. So you really need to make sure that you don't play your bass notes in the wrong time at the wrong time. For example, in the very beginning, there might be a temptation to do something like this. Something like that where you play the bass note at the wrong time. The bass note really needs to make sure you make sure the bass notes are on the downbeat. There's a lot of syncopation where you have to subdivide the beat into 16th notes 
to figure out where it is you're going to play. There's a lot of the, uh, in Bossa Nova, there's a, there's a very common figure where you play one E and uh, two E and uh, one E and uh, two E and uh, that sort of thing where you're changing the melody note or the chord on the very last 16th note of the beat or the the uh, chord might not happen on the downbeat it might happen on the second 16th note of of the B so one E and uh there's a lot of that going on in bossa nova you also have some um, some shifts around here some bar chords uh, watch the bar chords um, you have some guide fingers uh, the second, I'm sorry, fifth, fifth measure, going from the fourth measure to the fifth measure. So make, all right, that's yeah, a guide finger. It doesn't mean a slur, slur it, or a slide. It's just a, uh, it's just a shift, really, with the second finger. A lot of a lot of um, shifting around here. Uh, at measure 15, you're going to go all the way up to the C sharp here. You're up here at uh, the C sharp. Hold a chord there. The finger numbers and the string numbers are given. All right. Pay close attention to what's happening here. Keep this note down. This is a half bar at the seventh fret. That note right here, I don't have the second finger uh, in there, but there's a C sharp there. That's a bar two strings at the fifth fret. I'm on measure 17. And then you're gonna bar, then you're gonna bar four strings at the second fret. And then the bar comes off right there where that accent mark is at the end of 18. When you get to measure uh, 19, all right, it's a B minor nine. There's an open fourth string. Then there's an, a D sharp here. Everything else stays down. All right, the C sharp's still down at measure 20. Keep that fourth finger down. still down. Now at measure 21, you're going to come off of that C sharp. So that's a that's a pretty complicated little closing section there from uh, 19 to the end. So really watch those fingerings. Also keep in mind that when you memorize a piece of music, or even if you're working on it, then if you don't plan on memorizing it, uh, something like this, I would recommend that you memorize it so that you can uh, you can play it wherever you go. You won't have to have the book to, to play music every time. Uh, you need to uh, every time you want to play music. Um, this is important. It's important important distinction to understand that just because you know how to read music, it doesn't mean that you don't memorize the music, and that you can uh, go someplace where there's a guitar and you can pick up the guitar and play the music. You don't have to have the written sheet music. So that's what's important about developing your repertoire. You can actually learn how to memorize something very effectively if you start at the end. For example, if you practice the end of this, uh, this little section at the end here from 19 to the end, is pretty pretty complicated. So you might want to get that, that done first. Work on that. So maybe work on 19 to, to the end. Uh, get that down and then Work a little, a little um, farther up, like at 17, where you have have the bar chords and the shifting. Work your way up all the way to um, to maybe measure 15. Play 15 to the end, and then maybe take a break from that, and then start playing uh, the beginning. Start working on the beginning of the piece, and so you start memorizing the beginning of the piece. And that way, as you work through it, you've actually already learned the ending of the piece. And once you, once you get to the ending, you'll, you'll be very strong because you've already been there. 
most people, when they're learning a piece of music, they end up learning the beginning way more than they know the rest of the piece. So it's important to go ahead and, and uh, break it up a little bit, play the ending, work on the ending first, and see how that goes. I think it'll give you a lot of confidence. Here's un poco de bolsa. See you in lesson 14. <laughs>